Welcome to the place where we learn about and learn from the leaders in our field who are powering human creativity. I am Aaron Dworkin, and this is Arts Engines. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me here on Arts Engines. Today's guest is Howard Herring, who serves as president and CEO of the New World Symphony. Howard, welcome to the show. Great to be here, Aaron. I'm so glad, glad to be back and ready to talk. Yes, yes, yes. So, and of course, there are so many ideas and innovations and trends that emanate from New World that, you know, we could spend 10 shows uh, just on things that are that are happening there. So, but I thought I would kind of even just delve right in. One of those kind of hallmarks of, of New World has been uh, the wall cast. And I have my own very, very fond memories with Sphinx's partnership and being there and seeing, and for the very first time in my life being like, I wonder if I'd prefer to be outside of the hall for this concert and out on the lawn watching this on this incredible wall than actually in the hall. Um, so first, just for any of our audience who may not know, could you just kind of share with us the quick overview of what is though the wall cast? You bet, you bet. I'm gonna give you a, a very fast history. When the New World Symphony opened 33 years ago, Ted Arison, who was the, the philanthropic founder along with Michael, Nelson Thomas, Ted said, I think we should put a screen over the lobby entrance door. And so uh, a, a relatively small television screen and two tiny little speakers, it was hilarious, were installed. So if you were walking on Lincoln Road, the pedestrian mall that is uh, in front of the Lincoln Theater, you could see that there was an orchestra playing. Later on with Knight Foundation funding, we put a, pro a projection screen on Lincoln Road, set up some chairs, started to simulcast from inside. That was the beginnings of what became the wall cast. So as we moved to the building and as we talked with Frank Gehry, the idea was that we would turn the building inside out, that we would capture what was going on in a performance and then bring it out to the wall live and in the moment. And we were able to do that by installing 10 fixed cameras and having a really elite sound system, an extraordinary sound system, both for capture and for playback. So the wall cast comes from the idea that we will share this music with as many people as possible. And just as you said before, some people prefer the, the park. 75% of the wall cast audience has never purchased a ticket to the New World Symphony. It is a second audience, 750 inside, 2000 outside. Wow. So, and I think that's really key, right? So, because obviously we have a lot of fellow, you know, administrative leaders in the field who are watching, right? And oftentimes what we might hear are either the arguments of, you know, why would we do that? It's going to draw our audience out. We're going to sell less tickets or people will be out here um, or the other, which is, you know, it's going to, you know, dilute all what we're about is that live experience. And now coming out of COVID, we can finally get back into why on earth would we do something outside? What did you hear those types of, of kind of, you know, hesitance and, and what was your response to it? So you're, you're in the middle of the subject. Um, very good question. So in the early days, we wondered those very things. Are we going to, are we going to diminish our inside audience? That did not happen. And people actually made choices. But what we also learned from a lot of survey and anecdotal, uh, just conversations as I walk through the park, I'm always talking with our audience. They will tell you that they are having transformative experiences. It's still in a communal setting. I mean, the, the magic of making music in a concert hall is that you get these individual transformations, but in a communal setting. That communal setting is outside now, and it just happens to be with 2,000 people instead of 750, and they are loving it. It's more informal. I actually wonder, I can't prove this, I wonder if the quality of the sight and sound in contrast to the informal setting of outside makes it even more dramatic or even more, even more powerful. Can't prove it, but I, that's one of my theories. One of the things that they have told us is that their first reason for coming is that they love to be outside in the Miami 
wintertime weather. The second reason is because they get to be with their friends. And the third reason, a close third, is that they love this music. So it's interesting that the balance point has to do with community and being outdoors and informal and also hearing the music. Interesting. That's phenomenal. And then do you find that because maybe it's those first two reasons that may draw people initially, but then it's the music that really, you know, keeps them coming back and they find that they are immersed now in this medium that we all love so much. Yeah, they are coming back for sure. There's about 10,000 people in the Wallcast Concert Club and we are, correspond with them all the time. But, but we've gotten to know that audience just like we get to know the inside audience. These are, these are now part, they are now part of the New World family and they come back over and over and over again. Wow. So kind of taking this digital idea, right? Obviously this past year was unique for, for all of us. In some ways, I feel like New World may have been positioned in some ways better than many institutions because of just how much technology you were already incorporating. Um, do you find that these digital landscapes and as you're moving forward, is it not only an opportunity to connect with people differently, but do you find it informs the art that you're making at all, that it has any influence on what you're actually creating? Yeah. Um, well, if you read Marshall McLuhan, he will tell you that the medium is the massage, is the message. And in fact, it is. What you would do in a normal concert setting is not what you will do, what we will do online, what we are doing online. And we are trying to understand how you contextualize, and if most important, how you personalize these musical statements. Michael is so good at this, and he has done it for such a long time. You gotta remember, he, was, he finished the, the New York Philharmonic Young People's Concerts. The last five years of broadcast, he was doing that as the conductor and MC. So even in his 20s, he was learning how to talk to the camera. We are trying to teach our fellows how to talk to the camera because we understand that this is indeed the future. It affects how you bring the music forward in terms of start times, in terms of durations, in terms of how you alert people to the fact that something's coming. Uh, I'll give you a good example. One of our percussion players, Marcelina Sohochka, did a percussion recital, one hour percussion recital um, a month ago. She had 2000 people who tuned in. She did it all herself. She went out with she set up her network and she just kept informing, 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 and 2,000 people tuned in. So there's a lot that can be done, but it has to be personal. It has to be very much of the medium. You can't just play in front of a camera and the contextualization makes a lot of difference. Uh, and I think that's really key because I think a lot of times some organizations or ensembles just say, oh, okay, every, people are going digital. They got 2,000, 5,000 people, whatever. We'll just do what we do. We're just going to play, put a camera there and, and then expect magic to happen. And they realize you really do have to immerse and embrace this new medium and let it influence how you're going to do it. And I love too what you said about personalizing, that you have to create what is a very personalized connection yep. through that digital medium. So well, it's the same as this conversation. I mean, people have come to know you because of this program and that becomes then your, their understanding of you. It's, it's that, it's that simple. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. So now you guys are even evolving this further. And so my understanding is there now will be a mobile wall cast. So could you kind of share a little on earth? How on earth do you take what is the wall of your theater and move it around your community? <laughs> so this was a crazy idea. Uh, and it's an extension of Ted Arison saying to Michael, Hey, we should put this screen above the, the door of the lobby. Uh, it's nine by 16. Uh, it is high, high end video display. LED wall is what it is. And it is on a trailer that allows us to pull it around Miami. Uh, it actually is in Miami now. It is, it is finally with us. And we will spend next fall understanding how to get into the neighborhoods with this representation. High end speakers, nine by 16 LED wall, our fellows, some of the students of our fellows, we work with, with some of the public schools and also the Miami Music Project, which is an El Sistema type program. So we'll have those kids with us. We'll do a little bit of live performance, a little bit of t talking about the music they're about to hear. And then most likely short performances, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, not more. And maybe we do it twice in a neighborhood on a given Friday night or a Saturday night or a Thursday night. But the key, going back to the personal, the key here is making the connection to those people in those neighborhoods. 
so that they are expecting us, but we understand how to talk to them. And in fact, they become part of these presentations as well. So it's, um, we are definitely going to the audience and we hope we're gonna make some friends. Maybe they come to New World to mm -hmm. come inside. Maybe they come to the Wallcast, but maybe they just know us through the mobile wall and that would be fine. Wow, that's it's incredible. And so just so I'm understanding, will you bring live musicians out into the community and do that? Or will the musicians be even at the hall and then that's broadcast live out to the mobile wall? How are you thinking of yep. doing different? Yes and yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes awesome. and yes. So there we will have we will have our own players. The fellows will be with the wall in person. Um, and, and hopefully uh, some of their students and people from the neighborhood who would be part of speaking on our behalf or on behalf of the music or the institution or the neighborhood. But then the actual presentation on the LED wall will be a concert or some portion of a concert from New World. In the early days, we will do it uh, as a rebroadcast. It's an encore uh, wall cast, if you will. Uh, when we get good, we will do it live. <laughs> awesome. Give us some time. That's, you know, it's just extraordinary. And, and I think ultimately could be replicated in different ways that fit for each community, but in other communities around the country. Um, I just think it's really just a powerful, using this technology to connect more um, uh, authentically and to a greater extent with, with your community. It's, it's really awesome. So unfortunately, we're just about out of time, but I'm curious your own administrative leadership style, right? A lot of people tune into the show because they're looking for best practices and, and, and things, lessons learned from, from other leading uh, arts administrators. And just wondering, as you think about this past year, was there kind of a, a greatest challenge that you thought, wow, as, as an administrator, oh my gosh, like this, this, is a, this is a rough one. And that either you were able to figure out and kind of solve or bring certain skill sets to solve, or that you feel, well, you know what, that was tough. I lessons learned. And now I think about this in the future, any kind of aspect of that type of administrative leadership you yeah, could share sure. with us. Absolutely. Isolation is the first word that comes to mind. The isolation was intense in terms of our own understanding of it. We were by ourselves and we were accustomed at the New World Symphony. We are all right here. I mean, my office is on the practice floor. So I'm right in the middle of the swirl of the fellows as they come and go. And we're here with the audience and we're here with the community, et cetera, et cetera. But we were isolated. And what I discovered was that the trick was to listen, to listen actively because people were so far away from each other you had to draw them out to get them back inside the familiar com familial conversations that are part of the new world culture. And it was, it was a challenge. I had to stop and listen. Wow. That's my answer. Wow. I don't want to do it again, by the way. Right. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you on that. <laughs> Well, Howard Herring, you truly are one of the arts engines who is powering human creativity in our field. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you, Aaron, for doing this. This is important stuff. Thank you. Mm -hmm.